Hello and how are you? My name is Dr. Indian Bass and I welcome you to our 16th lecture of creating a complete inventory management system. We always do 40 minutes as you can see our counter has started oh, so we don't waste much time. Let's go straight to our yesterday, I mean to our previous business and resume from where we stopped at. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to launch our project in Visual Studio Code. So I'll come to our Visual Studio Code here. And then I'll go ahead and launch or load Invader Track. So this is Invader Track. So after doing that, I'm going to go ahead and run it. So I'll open my terminal and do PHP action sub. So that is it. So after doing that, mm -hmm, I'm going to try and test what we did in the previous lecture. So I'll have to open my postman. As you can see, postman is there. This is our postman. I want to move it this side. This is our postman. Now, if we send in the username and password, email and password, and send. We are able to log in and you can see here we are able to get the what uh the user's data and their respective company so you can see that our postman is working clearly and i believe at this level you understand what is meant by by the postman and uh you are able to do us to, to use it so that much said uh, with that much said let's go straight into our today's business and get started so Yesterday we we completed where someone can create the registration and also the login. Okay, so today we are going to resume from there. So if we come back to our project, uh, we go to our file of the API. So you can see that uh, we finished the endpoint of creating the registration. Okay, the registration as well as what as well as login so now we proceed so what i'm going to do i'm going to launch our project there it is and uh, uh here i'm logging as a system admin let me log in as a company okay here i'm logging as a company so this is our project okay so let me put it here nearby me here okay, i can put it here all right let me put it there so this is the project okay so let's begin first things first so we're going to begin by creating the end point of what of financial period so after the person has 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 landed on their system i mean after they have created their account so we're going to use this uh all this model to guide us on the module that we're going to put so we shall need an endpoint where the company should be able to create their financial uh financial year where it starts and also where it ends okay and also settings okay so we're going to begin by creating the endpoint where the company should be able to do what to create their financial year then after that we shall go ahead and create the end point where the company should register their employees and then the end point where the company should register the store categories as well as the what the stock sub uh, subcategories as well as the company's etc so that's what you're going to do right now so let's begin let's begin now uh the business so we're going to begin by creating the what the financial uh, periods okay financial periods so uh to be testing i'm going to get the user that i just created in the in the login okay i'll come here and get for example this user that we've just created okay so let me let me create just a new user so i'll come here to registration registration and then come here and create uh, a new user mobile 360 at gmail.com about 360 gmail.com and then we go ahead and register this user so you can see the user is there has been created 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this one to log in. I'm going to use this one to log in to the web. So I'll come here to our web and I log out this company that we're using. And then we use this one, Sombo360, password 1234, and then login. So you can see I've successfully logged in. And you can see here my deep by my, my, my today sale is at zero and also the employees are at zero. So this is the AP, the user that are going to use to test the API and everything. And you can see I'm logged in as a company administrator. So this is the user that I've just created using the what? The mobile application and when i come to the web you see everything is working uh very very well so now we begin with our very first module so we want the user uh to be able to create the financial period you know you cannot create anything before you create a financial period so on the user to be able to create the financial period using their what using their ipi okay or using the api so what we're going to do here, we're going to create that uh, logic. So the US will be able to create, to create their financial period. All right, so let's begin. Now, I'm going to teach you a technique. So I want you to be very, very, very careful. I'm going to teach you a technique that can help you save a lot of time when you're creating your what? Your mobile applications as well as the APIs. So what every developer does, or what many, many developers do, you see the logic that we have just done here. The logic that we have just done here for registration. You saw how it took almost the whole 40 minutes or the whole video to create just the registration logic. So it means that that logic is the one that you're going to repeat for the rest, for all the what? For all the modules. And remember, each module that you're seeing here, for example, this financial, financial what? Financial period. They are uh three main things that are going to be done so the first thing is to create that is the first main thing that is going to be done there uh to create a financial period the second thing the second thing that you're going to need is uh to update what you call edit okay and the third thing that you're going to need is to list so these are the common things that we shall need a list of all the financial periods and the list of creating and the list of updating so everything in every module that we're going to do we're going to do these repetitive things so it would be smart if you can find a way whereby you can create one endpoint that can accommodate these things for all the modules so for me i was thinking so 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 much some time back and i thought that can i create just one endpoint that can support any part, any class to do these different things. And I think I was successful. I was able to create an endpoint where you can just only be specifying the model that you're referencing to. And then after uh, you do what? And after um, you use that endpoint for the rest of your models. By doing like that, you'll have learned the power of creating the endpoints with simplicity or just creating one endpoint that is going to work for the rest of your what of your models and that will can really 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 save a lot of your time so this is what we're going to do it's what i'm going to teach you how to do so we are going to begin by creating the endpoint that will accept the creation of all the models that we're going to have in our what in our project and then after we're going to create the endpoint that will accept all the edit Okay, so uh, the way how I always do these two, I always make them to be in the same what in the same um, in the same in the same in the same uh, method, and then this one be in another method. So I'm going to take you step by step and we create uh, the endpoint that can support any kind of what of uh, the creation and updating, and then after we shall go ahead and create the one that will support any kind of what of listing. Of any any what any kind of uh, an input that will like, support any kind listing of any kind of the model. So let's begin. Okay, so that's going to be very powerful, and you're going to do it very uh, slowly to make sure that you don't make any mistake because it is very very critical. So we begin. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to come here, 
uh, so I can collapse this one. I'm here on our API. So I'm going to create here a method. So we'll begin with this one, the one that will accept the creation. So I'm going to create a method here. I'm going to call it maybe, I'm going to create an endpoint. I'm going to call it maybe create, or you can call it maybe update, or you can call it edit, something like that. Or you can call it maybe create dash update, anything that you want. So I'm going to call, create this endpoint that I'm going to call, uh, update okay so as i said that this endpoint is going to be accepting all kinds of models so if i want to accept a something or someone if one to the if i want someone to be able to offer me an endpoint so what i'm going to do i'm going to put here a slash and then i'm going to put here uh the condition and then say maybe a model so by doing like this it means that for someone to send data to this endpoint they must provide us something in the middle here so I'm going to create uh, a function called maybe my update, something like that, or API update, something like this. So let's go ahead and create this function. So I'll come here to our what? To our login. And then uh, we're going to put here update. So this time we're going to accept two things. So the first thing we're going to accept uh, the model. And then the second that we're going to do, we're going to accept the what? The request itself. I think I've already done something like this before. Let me see. All right, just pardon me. So you see how I did? So here I accept the the model, okay? I accept the model, okay? All right, so this is our method, okay? I come back. So we're going to accept two things are going to accept i mean it's going to be the maybe update something like that we can call it api let me call it api so that if we say stroke api we mean that you're going to mean that dynamic what that dynamic endpoint okay so and after i'm going to accept here the model so by doing like this it means that you're going to accept something uh someone send you a record so they cannot access that thing if they don't do what they send you anything in this parameter then i come here to my update method so the first thing that you have to accept is the request okay uh is the request and then comma then uh whatever you want or the whatever that you're going to send the second uh value there so i can call this one model okay so let me come in this method and uh we see if we are here so far so i can put here maybe say good to go and i save so after doing that, I'm going to come back here to our postman. So let's go ahead and try to target this one, okay? So I'm going to come here and uh, create a new folder. So I can just duplicate this authentication folder. All right, so I'm going to rename this folder and call it uh, financial. financial periods something like that all right so in this financial period we're going to have let me first delete this one we're going to have the first one of create financial period okay so i can just come and call this one financial period dash create so this is going to be the one for doing what for creating financial period all right so let's come back here so if you come here to our endpoint, it's just the word API. 
so it means that this is the main uh the main route or the main endpoint and then stroke anything that we want so it means that if i come here i can just i will just begin just by adding that api api then stroke anything that you want so if you don't put anything here on the api this word api and try to send you'll see that uh it did not it did not what it did not find this thing called api stroke api why because in our api the second thing that we're expecting the what is the model you can see here i'm putting here m you can put anything you can put for example model if you want to okay so it means that i have to put api stroke whatever i want okay so i can put like this whatever i want so if i send now you see that it is able to identify this uh endpoint all right so according to what i'm going to design okay so i want someone to be sending me to be sending me the name of the model exactly as how it is in our what in our project so for example right now we are on the financial period create or creating the financial period so i'm going to expect someone to send to me here the model this is how you access the model here so send this model for example let me test it okay let me just do here uh die and put just the model so if i come here and try to say stroke whatever i want so when i save you see that it is bringing back whatever i sent here okay so if i put like this whatever i sent there is what it brings back to me so i want here someone to be sending me the model name so what i'm going to do i'm going to get financial period okay so this is our financial period you can see that and then i'm going to come here and put this one as it is so i'm putting here the name exact name of the what of the model as how it is designed in this what in our project as it is exactly so this is just a technique that i'm trying to teach you maybe that can help you uh to speed up your projects now if i try to send here you'll see that it is sending me back the exact name that i've sent to it so that means that okay we can now receive the name of the model okay so i hope that you can see now everything is all right all right so another thing that we're going to do is that uh the authentication so almost everything that we're going to do here we must be able to know the user who is what who is logged in otherwise if you're not logged in then you know that okay you're not a what a user so what i'm going to do i'm going to be sending the user id of a person who is logged in through the header okay i'm going to be sending the user id of a person who is logged in through the what through the headers okay so others use tokens but for me i want to begin with you with this on a simple level so i want someone to be able to send there uh, the user ID of someone who is logged in through the header. So I'm going to come here, here in the header. So we can choose a way how we can uh, call the user ID. Uh, for example, I can say maybe logged in user ID. So this is how we can be calling it. So you can now you have to get something that is not very, very common. Okay, so that someone should not be able to. To, to identify it you can call it token you can call it anything okay so in this header i want someone to be sending the header and i mean to be sending us values in the header i don't want it to put in the body because the body can be accessed anywhere so i want it to be sent through the headers as logged in user id so here i can put the value as one so when i send i want to be getting this for example i want to be getting this logged in user here okay so now we shall go back to our what to our project here we shall go back to our project and go, go back to our, to our API. Now, if I want to get uh, so, if I want to get this header value, we just simply say
Let me restart my copilot. It helps me a lot. that to me all right i'll go ahead and serve and to save time by not keep on typing things there eh? all right so uh we come back here to our endpoint here no this is not a project sorry Say see. So yeah, that's how you get the header value. Yeah, you just simply say this request and then you say header and then you put there the value that you want to get from the header. So I want someone to be get sending to us this header ID. So let me go ahead and do some DD and display it. Okay, so if I go ahead and try to send, sorry, let me use die, not dd. Now, if I go ahead and send, you'll see that we're having here the header. So if I put here like, like this and I send, you'll see the value that we have sent, it is there. So this is going to be sent through the header just for the sake of security. Okay, now, so after doing that, uh, we're going to create a method in utils. That is going to be responsible of getting for us the person who is doing what who is uh, logged in okay through getting the the header okay so let's go ahead and do that function so i'll go here in utilities here in a function of utils so i'm going to create a public static function so public static function and I'm going to call it get user okay so it will be accepting request of HTTP this one okay let me put here R like this so here I'm going to be calling this function to get someone who is logged in okay so I'll go ahead. I don't want to repeat myself. So I'll go ahead and say utils. And then I say get function. I mean get user. And I pass to it a what? A, a, a what? I pass to it um, the request. Okay. So I can get user here by saying u equals to utils. Got logged in user. So let me go ahead and for example die here. And display the person who is doing who is what who is logged in like this. So I'm going to to do what I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, and go ahead and copy this line of getting the header and then come to our utils function of getting user. So let's go ahead and say logged in user equals to I get this user from the header that was sent. So I go ahead and say user equals to, I say user find this value that came in the header and then I return whatever has come out. Return you. So by doing like this, we shall have got the user. So I'll be just calling this function only one time to get the person who is logged in. So let's go ahead and call it here and then try to display the name. I hope you are together here. Okay. 
So I'll come back now to our API controller and then try to call this function. Now, if we try to send now, let me send the request. You see, I'm able to get the person who is logged in. So if I put two, I'm able to get this person. All right. So I hope you can see that. So uh, what if I say the value that it does not exist? Let's say maybe a user who doesn't have the ID that exists. You'll see that I'm getting what? An error. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put here just some condition and say if equals to uh, null or if whatever user that we've got is equal to null, then I can put maybe uh, you are not logged in, okay, or unauthenticated and uh, unauthenticated and unauthenticated. Okay, so a user who is logged in and authenticated. So here I go ahead and get the user through the header and then here I check if it is not found, I die with unauthenticated. So if I come here, you'll see unauthenticated. So the user is not logged in. Okay, so if I put a correct value, for example, one, you'll see the, person, the person's name is there. So now what how are you going to go log in now the user uh -huh. so i'll come here and click on the login and then i log in this user using the provided password and the username so you can see the id of this user is nine so the id of this user is nine so what you're going to do you are going to put to make this nine a variable so we substitute it everywhere we need the id of a user so when you want to, to change a user, we just change that variable. So let's go uh, to the environment, come to the local environment, and then put here, for example, maybe user underscore ID, and then the value is going to be nine. This is the user that we want to use. So if you want to change the user, let's say maybe we want to test another user, you just simply come and change this nine, and then you should be able to update the whole what, the whole system. So I'll get the name of this variable and come back to our collection. And come back here to login. So here, where there is a login, logged in user ID, I'll just go ahead and remove this and put the user ID. So it will be substituted there as nine. So if I go ahead and click on here, you'll see I'm getting the person who is logged in right now, or who I were considering to be logged in as this person. So this is the header of the create. Okay, so in the header that you're submitting, you must submit the what? A create. All right, so now let's go ahead and go back to the body now, okay? Now, if you try to click here, you'll see that everything is all right. So let's go back to our, to our, what, our API. So here, I first get the person who is logged in. I check if the, I, the user ID is not there. I just say authorize and I stop here. I send back the error. Otherwise, I display their name. All right, so that is how we shall be getting someone who is logged in for the API for now. Whether there's other better ways, but for now, I can just get started with that so I can understand the concepts. All right. So now the next thing that we're going to do is uh, to do what? To get the model. Okay. So to get the model, um, remember this model is here. This is the model name that you're getting here. So if I want to access it, I just simply say, you see, model equals to like this. So you'll be able to do what? To get the model. So I'll go ahead, for example, if I want to uh, to create a new record, I just simply say uh, model, I mean, for example, maybe new record equals to new and then model. So by doing like this, it will be able to call this one as a what? As a class. Okay. And then you can go ahead and do everything that you want. All right. So we proceed. So this is how we shall be getting the what? The models. Okay, this is how we shall be getting the model. So it means that our model is going to be dynamic. I hope you're getting the point. Everything that we sent here as the second parameter. Okay, let's say that we want to work with the user. Everything that we sent here, the second parameter, we'd go ahead and do what? It will go ahead and substitute this one automatically. At the end of the day, we shall not be need to create uh, specific endpoints like, okay, this one is for the what, for the user, for the what. Since this one will automatically access the what? The model. I hope you're getting that. 
All right, so that is uh, very nice. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do now is uh, is to get the values, okay? The values of the table of this model, okay? The next thing that we're going to do is to get the values of the table of this model. Because we are going to create a dynamic SQL. I mean, we're going to create a dynamic insertion of data. So what we're going to do, it means that before we even try to insert data, someone can send even some garbage in the post. So it will be good that we know the columns of this particular model that it has been sent at this particular time. Okay? So if we know the columns in, of that model, what does it mean? It means it will help us not to do what? Not to allow unnecessary inputs or unnecessary what? Unnecessary values in the what? In the table. And hence reducing what? Uh, the errors. So uh, that's what we're going to do right now to get the tables of, uh, I mean to get the, the, the values or the columns of the table in this what? In this, um, in this, uh, particular uh, particular what in this particular table all right so after doing this so if you want to get the table name in uh, in laravel of a certain model you just simply say uh, for example i can say table equals two i go ahead and say new and then i open bracket and say this new model and then i say get table so by doing like this, it will be able to get for me the table. So let me go ahead and do here, for example, die, and then we'll see that I'll be able to get the table name. Okay. So just simply, we'll sh we should have created the new the, the record here, like the object. We just simply say new. All right. We can go ahead and create the object, for example. Let's go ahead and create the object. So the object that I'll be using, for example, we can say object equals to new. And then you go ahead and say model, something like this, equals to new model. Object equals to new, and then you say model like this. So by doing like this, to be able to do what? To create for us the object. So now if you need to get the table, the table name, you just simply say table name equals table. You can say maybe table name equals to object, and then you say get name. That's how you get the name of the table. Of that particular model in Laravel. So if I come and refresh here, you'll see the table name is financial period. So you can see that everything is now clean. I don't know how I can increase the font. I see as if this thing is very, very tiny. How can I increase the font? Is it here? All right, I hope you can see. So you see, we are able to get the table. Let's try another model. For example, user model. Just pass here user, and it should be like the same name how it is in the database. So in the send, you see, admin user, this is the table. So you see like uh, everything that we are sending that is valid. For example, let's say stock stock item. Okay. So I just simply put here stock item. And I send, you see, the right uh, what stock item is there. You see, everything is okay. So let me go ahead and put financial period. You see, we have the name of financial periods or the table where financial period is fetching records. So after doing that, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going now to get the columns of what? Of uh, that financial period. I mean of that table. So to get the table, you just simply write. So after getting the table name, so to get the columns, I can just simply say maybe columns, okay, equals to. Then write this schema, like this schema, and it should be coming from packets, I think. It should be coming for for kids. This one here. Let me show you. Make sure that your schema is coming from this one. Okay, 
fuckheads support fuckheads that one and then you say get column list and then you pass here the table name so by doing like this it will be able to get the columns in that part in that table so if i for example here uh, i send back uh maybe i say utils and then say success i just pass the columns table you see i just pass the columns table now if you come here and send the, the table of the columns so you can see here we have we have successfully uh, accessed all the tables i mean all the names in there sorry we have successfully accessed all the what the names in uh, that particular table all right so everything is okay so we have now the names now the next that we're going to do is now to get the data that has been sent to us okay is to get the data that has been sent to us so the data will be sent to us through forms of course like though you're seeing this form so what we're going to do we are going to get the 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 the, the names in that form all right so to get the names in the form of course we can use post since this is sending them to post so i'm going to get them through uh post super global variable so i can say data equals to and then i say i think let me see let's see this one error and then say all let's go ahead and uh, return back here and you see if it has got the data so i go ahead and try to send you'll see that it has got the data so it gets the the key and the value the key and the value the key and the value so this is the data that we're just sending for now okay so yeah that is it i hope you can see that so we are sub we have successfully get the key and the value so now after we are going now to create now the object so it means that we're going to loop through this data and initialize the object so we have the columns we have the data that submit that is submitted so let's go ahead and then we have the object that has been created so let's go ahead and loop through this okay so we're going to say for each uh for each so for each data so you put here the key so you have here the key and the value let me try to so this is the key the key is this one and then this is the value so you have the key and the value so i'm going to do what i'm going to go ahead and check if the key is not in the array if the key is not in the array of uh, the columns or the columns of the table okay these columns i'll go ahead and continue so i'll skip it i'll just simply write continue in this loop like this so it will skip that one so we may have also some some columns that we don't need to to create i mean to update okay so i can call this one for example what you call except okay so for example i may not need to update the id i may not need to update the created at i may not need to update for example i mean i may not need to temper with the with what with the updated at okay so something like that so if i want to not temper with this one so i'm creating here an empty array i mean an array called except and then i put there things that i don't need to do what to temper with so i'll also go ahead and check if 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 the what if the key is not in the except array it should also be skipped so if something passes these two these two broad blocks the first one is checks if it is not in array of the columns so if it is not in the columns that uh, uh if it's not in the columns what in the columns of the table okay these are the columns of the table then it should be skipped it means that it is something that we don't expect in our tables the second thing if it is not in the what in the in the in the except array such as created that it should also be sk skipped if it is in the except array in the except array it should also be skipped then after the remaining one it should be added to uh, the data or to the object so can you see here what i'm doing uh, time is up. all right so here what i'm doing so if the key is up it passes this to the key i go ahead and say object and remember i put here dollar sign dollar sign and then the key 
So this means that this key is going to be a substituted here. So instead of seeing something like this name, okay, it's going to be substituted there as the what as the value. And then I store the value in that object. So by doing like this, we shall do we shall have done what? We shall have created the object. Then after I'll go ahead and do what and save this object. Okay, let's go ahead and now save this object. So we try. So after doing this loop, so we'll go ahead and do it and try. Try. So we say try and say save. So if it fails, we catch and display the error. Okay. So if we so if it fails, it will get it will fail from here and display the error. All right. So let's go ahead and say maybe new object equals two. Then we we'll go ahead and find that particular object. We we'll go ahead and find it. Okay. So we check if it was successfully created, or we can just send it back like that. If it skips this, okay, then you go ahead and send success, and then we pass the new object here, and also say created successfully, created success, uh, fully like this, okay. So you can see that like there, like that we shall have uh, created our object successfully. All right, now let's go ahead and test this and see if it works. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to our table. Okay, and then go to our what? To our to our inverter track, and then go to our table of what? Of financial periods, and then just copy this table of columns. These are the record that you need to financial period. All right, so let's go ahead and. And and put this data in our what? In our in our postman. So this is our postman. Can in my this one here. So let's go ahead and put the data in our postman. So if I want to edit in bulk, I can just simply click here. Here. So this one will switch edit in bulk, edit in values, edit in bulk, edit in values. This one here. You can see it is here. You can even scroll and get hidden. But if you scroll down, you'll see it here. So let me edit in bulk and I remove all these. Okay. So I paste these columns names here. Okay. I paste them here. I can um, zoom so I can see things clearly. So these are the columns names. All right. So we begin. So I go ahead. ID, I don't need it. So I can delete it. Created at, I don't need it, I can delete it. Updated at, I don't need it, I can delete it. Okay, so company ID. So company ID, uh, I think this one is created automatically uh, in the creating. So let me come here to, to financial period. So financial period. Uh, so when you're creating, we don't even send the company ID. Okay. So, but it will be good to get the company ID from the user. So, yeah, so you see, company ID is important. All right. So, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so, company ID, we are going to need it. All right. So, let's go ahead and uh, and fix that. So, when I say, we'll do press code and S so you can put here for you the eco signs. So, let us go ahead. We shall also need to submit the company ID in this case. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get the company ID. So I'll come here to our collection and then come here to login and then we'll see the company ID. It is number six. So let's go ahead and add this one into variables because it's something that is going to also keep changing. So we'll come here to environment and then come to, to what? Uh, to our ham, to our inventor, inventor, track local and then add one more thing here uh, company id variable company id as a variable all right and then here we saw the company id for this company is number six so let's go ahead and substitute this company id from the other side so I'll come here come to create i can 
switch back this to the key like this so here where there is company id like this i put company id so it should be substituted i hope you are together all right so the name of the year so i can say maybe 2024-2025 that's the name of the financial year the start date so you have to write the correct standard start date uh, so I think we can begin with the year 2024 and then you say January and then you say first and then it will end 2024 uh, December ah, on 12 okay zero one I mean maybe 31st I think that is a valid I hope that is valid date structure uh -huh. so we go ahead and click on status we can make it active All right i uh had -huh. description uh 2024 20, yeah all right uh -huh. total total what total investment this one is optional so you can remove it and total sales i can remove it and then total profit you can remove it total expense i can remove it so I think these are the fields that I need to do what to create a financial year. So let's go ahead and submit. I hope you can see that. Okay. So let's go ahead and submit. When I click on submit, boom, you see, everything was correct. So the response, you see, the response code is one, and then the ID is worth is three, and then the company ID is okay. This is the data of the whatever. And then you can see the messages created successfully. So that is very nice. That shows that we have successfully created the method. I mean the uh, the company. I mean the the the, the financial year. You see that was success. So if you try to send again, of course you'll get the error. There is an active what? An active financial. First day, activate it. So that is very very nice, and that is very very powerful. So make sure that you watch the video very carefully. And make sure that you understand this concept because this concept is very very powerful in a way that you create only one you create only one what one endpoint that is going to work for almost everything that's going to work for almost everything for all the models so once you finish this endpoint it means that you have almost finished your api okay so make sure that you learn this technique it is my technique i invented it myself and uh, it is really helping me whoever you can see how you can improve it on your own all right uh that's it for this lecture let's meet in the next lecture where we are going to work now with the edit now we can see that at least the creation is done now the next lecture is where we're going to work with the what with the edit so make sure that you don't miss see you there